So let me share my screen and we will dive in. Cool. Awesome. Beautiful. Cool. So my presentation, Side Hustles, how to launch one. Before I dive in, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Justin. Um, I'm a former executive operator. I was the chief revenue officer at a company in LA called Patient Pop. Prior to that, uh, I worked five years in early stage technology at a company called ZocDoc. Um, I write it on LinkedIn a lot. I have a bunch of side hustles, uh, about five different side hustles that I've put together over the last two years. And um, I like to share about how to build those online. And so I'm going to take you through this quick presentation. And since the clock is ticking, I'm going to dive in right now. All right, cool. We've got a short agenda, five things, getting over your fear, choosing the right niche, building your audience, offering up your service, and then productizing your offering. So step one to me for building a side hustle is to start by getting over your fear. And <clears throat> the number one thing that I see that keeps people from getting started, building a side hustle, building their audience, is this thing that I call knowledge blindness. And knowledge blindness, to me, means that you just don't believe that you have any knowledge that's actually worth sharing. And I'd like to dispel that myth and that rumor right away and consider and like you to consider thinking about your high school teachers, right? So your high school math teacher, physics teacher, algebra teacher, English teacher, whatever. Um, they're not math wizards. They're not, you know, um, Nobel Prize winners. They probably haven't even written a book if they're an English teacher. They're just further along than you are in understanding math, science, writing. And so they are teachers. And that's exactly what teachers are. And you all have knowledge out there that you can turn into a side hustle, regardless of whether you're two years into your career, 10 years into your career, or 20 years into your career. And I want to just remind you, myself, anybody else that you follow online, 99% of us are just figuring it out still. So there's no perfect way to build a side hustle. There's no instruction manual. We're all just figuring it out. So don't have any fear to get started. I want you to understand that you are likely further in your journey than somebody else. So if you're an account executive, you have plenty to teach SDRs. If you're a manager, you have plenty to teach account executives and SDRs. If you're a director, you can teach managers. Someone is further behind in their journey than you are. And so I want you not to have any fear to go out and get started building your audience, building your service business, or building your side hustle. You do not need permission to teach or share. Nobody has to give you that permission except for yourself. So what I want you to do as an action step for this very short start is find something that you figured out the last two to three years that you would have absolutely loved to know two to three years ago, right? You happen to figure it out now, but who is in your shoes two to three years ago? That is something that you can turn into a side hustle. Once you kind of figure out what that is, you, you got to start to niche down. So step two is really choosing your niche. You cannot be everything to everyone. You can't just say, I help businesses grow. There's a million types of businesses. Do you help IBM? Do you help your local bakery? Those are very different types of businesses. So you can't be everything to everyone. You need to figure out exactly what you do. So what exactly do you do? And there's a couple of processes that you can go through here to really niche down and figure out exactly what you want to do. I like to use a three-step process called broad topic, niche, sub-niche. So for example, you can't just um, talk about sales. Sales is a huge category. What kind of sales? Maybe you move from the broad topic of sales down to um, your niche, which is SMB sales, transactional sales, quick sales. But again, that's very broad. There's a million different verticals. So maybe you could niche down further by saying, I talk about SMB sales in the healthcare technology vertical. That is a much more specific niche that you can own as someone creating content. The next thing that you need to think about is who do you help? So you have to go through the same process. You can't just help salespeople. There's a million types of salespeople. You could niche down and say, I help account executives. Or you could get further into a sub niche by saying, I help new account executives. We're niching down all of the things. What do we do? Who do we help? And then what do you actually help them do? So for example, a lot, I see a lot of people saying, I help account executives succeed. What does that mean? Right? So niche down a little further, take it from succeed to hitting quota, but how do you get them there? Well, maybe you help them improve close rates by 10%. 
So we're niching down. Who do we help and what do we help them do? And we're getting very, very specific. The action comes in putting it all together. So I help new account executives in the healthcare technology space improve their close rates by 10%. Ask me how. That is a very, very specific tagline, a very specific overall business that you can run. If you can go out and say, I'm the best person that helps new account executives in the healthcare technology vertical improve their close rates by 10%, grab a jump on a call with me and I'll show you how, you can now start a coaching business, a consulting business, a product business. But you need to go out and build your audience. So that is step three. Great content creation is all about systems. So <clears throat> when you create systems for content creation, it needs to be really laser focused on that new persona, the people that we just talked about, right? I use something called a content matrix. My content's been seen by 51 million people in the last two and a half years. And this is the matrix that I use. <clears throat> I have topics. So topics run down the left-hand side. What are some things I like to talk about on a regular basis? You'll see things in there like community, confidence, consistency, criticism. And across the top are styles and structures. What types of styles of content do I like to write? Actionable, motivational, contrarian, you know, observation. There's a, billion, a, a bunch of different types of styles that I like to write. So let's start with topics. Five sales topics might be prospecting, discovery, features and benefits, asking for the next step, getting a contract signed, whatever. Then you choose your structures. Pretty simple. Observation, step-by-step, -step, contrarian, X versus Y, a listicle, and you simply combine and ideate. To me, when I'm combining topics and structures, I'm not actually trying to write content. I'm just trying to come up with ideas. So I'll show you what I did here. I took prospecting. I paired it up with an observation. Discovery with a step-by-step. -step. Features and benefits with contrarian. And I won't read the last two for the sake of time. So these are ideas I just pumped out in probably 90 seconds or less. So let's talk about three of them. Prospecting plus observation. Four observations I made watching healthcare account executives prospect over 1,000 times. Discovery plus step-by-step. -step. Every new healthcare AE should know the seven-step method for effective Sandler discovery. Features and benefits plus contrarian. Maybe pitching features isn't always bad. What I learned from five years of selling in healthcare. So these are just ideas that you can start to create content really rapidly around, but you got to get the ideas onto paper because it makes content creation so much easier. Then you just write your ideas and you ship them, push them out into the world, publish them on LinkedIn, Twitter, indie hackers, Facebook groups, different sales blogs, wherever, Rev Genius. You want to make sure you're shipping your content. Once you've kind of picked your niche, started building your audience, creating your content, you want to start offering your service. And there are four simple goals when opening up your first service offering. And a service offering is like coaching, consulting, um, you know, putting together a group, webinars, things like that. Those are services, things where you're trading your time for money. The first goal is you want to make it easy for clients to submit an inquiry. So put together a very simple landing page. Make it easy to understand who are you, what do you do, and who do you help. Ask for their email address and a few, you know, what are, what are the challenges they're trying to solve? Put a big submit button there. Make it easy and make it easy to find. Put it in the featured section of your LinkedIn profile. Drop it in your posts. Put it on your Twitter handle. Throw it onto your website. Put it in your blog posts. You want to be featuring it very prominently and making it really easy for prospective clients to submit an inquiry. Second thing you want to do is talk to them about their business. Get people on the phone. Ask them questions. What are the challenges that you're trying to solve? What are the things that are keeping them up at night? Why isn't their business working? Why can't they close business if they're an account executive? You want to learn about their most common challenges. So what's keeping you from closing higher? What's keeping you from having more conversations? All those different things. You want to understand those common challenges. And then you want to implement good solutions, i.e. you want to do good work. Right? You want to be able to actually show the people that you're prospecting that you can solve their problems. You can accomplish these four things while simultaneously moving through three different stages of your service business. 
The first stage is what I call very low cost or free. You're just getting people on the phone, helping them solve their challenges and either doing it at no cost or very low cost. And you can kind of do this often, five times, eight times, 10 times. As long as you're pumping content out there and people are coming to you, you can get them on the phone, get them on a Zoom, solve their challenges, right? The whole goal of stage one is to learn. You want to learn what works, what doesn't. You want to get really comfortable solving people's challenges. And you want to collect testimonials. Testimonials are the most important step to getting to the next stage, stage two, which is what I call average or common rate. And that means you raise your rates up to sort of industry standard on an hourly basis or a project basis. And the whole goal is to learn more about your ideal customers. So maybe you talk to 10 people, 10 customers, you don't like talking to three of them and you love talking to seven of them. Go find what makes those seven people you love talking to. And that once you do that, you can move to your next stage, which is high ticket service items, right? So once you understand who you love working with, who you can help the most and what you're really good at, you can raise your rates. You can raise your rates to the top of the game. This is what I did. I started working with SaaS companies. I transitioned down into early stage SMB SaaS companies. And in my third year of consulting, I transitioned into early stage SMB SaaS companies in the healthcare technology vertical. I was able to 10X my rates by being the one guy who goes in and delivers high value consulting and advising in that very, very specific niche. So now I have a high ticket service item. The goal there is again, double down on your niche and do it for top dollar. So the action for you today is to build a simple landing page and create content on LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever that drives your ideal customer persona to that simple landing page where they can submit an inquiry and ask to talk to you. The last step is productizing your offering. The goal of building products should be to serve at scale customers who cannot afford your services. So you want to start by asking your customers or yourself, excuse me, what are the top two to three problems I address and solve consistently in my client base? Then choose one. Choose one of the biggest and most common problems you solve and commit to building a short and affordable product to solve that one problem. And the easiest way to do it is to time box your effort. Time boxing just means giving yourself a very standard amount of time to finish this. So time box your effort to building your very first product or course or webinar to 21 days. You could pick 14, you could pick 28, whatever you're most comfortable with. And then move fast and cheap. Get a cheap website on card, throw your product on Gumroad, use Zoom or Loom for video. Don't worry about technology, just move fast and cheap. You can always improve later. Consider your first product, your Trust Tripwire. It's a product that's so affordable and so valuable that it earns the trust of everyone who buys it. So for example, my first product, if you remember it back in 2019, was called the LinkedIn Playbook. It was 50 bucks and it was worth a hundred times that. And so in the first 16 months that I sold it, I sold about $78,000 worth of this low cost course. And that's about 4,800 bucks a month, which is pretty awesome for a side hustle. But my goal was to build trust, not make money. So the future products are where I wanted to make money, but only after trust is built. So my next course, the operating system, which just came out in July, I priced at three times the cost, $150. And three months later, I sold $170,000 worth of that course. So instead of $4,800 a month, I sold $56,430 worth a month. It's 12X better than my original course. Because once you have multiple courses, you've got a high ticket coaching and service business, your side hustle can ultimately become your full-time hustle. If you want to learn more, you can go and check out my product called The Operating System, and you can turn your LinkedIn audience into your very first side hustle. And because you attended RevCon, you can use coupon code REVCON for 20% off. So I will see you at theoperatingsystem.co. 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it.